Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Remember me? It's been over two months since I've even put out a YouTube video or worked on this thing back here. Work life has just been hectic and I know I always say that, but for real, this last couple of months has been weekend after weekend after weekend of traveling and I just haven't had any time to do anything outside of work really. Since the last track day, we found out that we are having some overheating issues on this thing back here and we're gonna address that by adding a full-size radiator I only have a half size radiator right now, and although I could probably do some ducting to help out with the cooling, I figured I might as well just upgrade since we have a fully built V-Series motor now. The radiator I went with is a full size from Coilrad. They're a great company, they have a great reputation, so it was a pretty easy decision to go with that. With that said, let's go ahead and get it installed. What we're going to do is jack up the front of the car so we can have some clearance to put a drain pan under the radiator. We'll undo the petcock, let the radiator completely drain out, and then we'll pull the radiator out. It should be a fairly quick and simple process. What we're also going to do today is we're going to make an auxiliary heater hose because right now I just have a couple of these coolant ports capped off. That guy right there, that guy right down there by the coolant thermostat housing. So I'm going to build that so it can still have some nice coolant circulation and help with that cooling as well. But other than that, it should be pretty straightforward. We'll get the radiator installed, we'll get this new hose installed, fill it up with coolant, bleed it, and we should be good after that. Pretty straightforward. Old radiator is already out. Look at all this room here for activities. Very simple, just upper and lower radiator hoses and the mount at the top here and it's out. And if you look over here, look at the size difference between the Koyo and the Skunk 2 I have. That's my half size, which is tiny, compared to my new full size. That's gonna be a really good improvement. All right, and already we have issues because this thing isn't sitting right inside the engine bay here. What I found out was, it was my fault I ordered a radiator for a car without AC. So this guy here must have been an AC car because we have these mounting brackets down there that are now interfering with the way the radiator sits entirely inside the engine bay. But not the biggest deal because what I can do is I can just knock those tabs out and this thing should be able to sit inside there perfectly fine after that. Okay, I've notched the two tabs that hold the AC condenser in. I've test fitted the radiator in there, but it seems to be a lot higher than it should be. And what I realized was that the radiator support is actually bent. Typically there is a jack point right under there, um, right under this part, right here. And from what it looks like, it may have been used right there before and has actually bent up the radiator support. So it's bowed up right in the center. So when you put the radiator in, it kind of teeters back and forth, left and right. So with a little bit of pounding um, at the bottom part of this, the radiator support there and the mount itself and messing around with the uh, support mounts below the radiator, I think I was able to get it uh, fairly level enough for it to work. Again, just one of those things you have to deal with, especially on a car that has history of uh, some front end damage. So again, horn is crushed there. Evidently the radiator support isn't in the best shape. So we did what we had to do. Everything is solid there. So we'll go ahead and put the radiator in. We'll attach the fan to it and then we can bolt everything up, put the hoses back on and uh, that should be pretty much it. There's always something, but of course we find solutions and we get past it.
hoses are hooked up. Just got to put the uh, overflow reservoir in except for I'm going to wait for that. I'm going to go ahead and build this uh, bypass hose real quick. I've got a 180 hose here and then just a 90 degree hose and basically I have to go from this cap right down here to this cap down here on the thermostat housing. So we'll go ahead. It'll look something like this by the time it's done. Something like that. So it should work out pretty, pretty good. I just have a uh, union hose fitting union in the middle a um, couple clamps and then uh, we should be good Got everything hooked up, got that new hose connected down there, got my bleed funnel installed, everything's good to go. It's filled up with distilled water and a little bit of coolant additive in there. Now it's just time to start the car and uh, we'll let the system bleed itself out. So, go inside the cabin here, make sure it's in neutral. We'll go ahead and turn the kill switch on, the ignition on, hear the fuel pump prime because it's very loud. Go ahead and start it. Alright, it's running. We'll just continue to monitor it. Make sure she gets all wet out. Taking most of that water. We'll go ahead and add a little bit more. Okay, so we've been bleeding for a little bit now. Top hose is hot. Lower hose is still a little cool, so the thermostat hasn't opened up yet. The fan did kick on already, though, blowing. I've got uh, the S300 hooked up right here to my phone. Coolant temps at 187. So thermostat should be opening up pretty darn soon here. And when it does that, we'll see a huge rush of bubbles come out of here. And then we'll see the water level drop in the funnel. At that point, this bottom hose will start to get hot. And then we can uh, close off the system and call it a day. All right, we're done bleeding the system. Stayed at about 189 the entire time. Got all the air out. Everything's topped off. And uh, it's running well. So that's pretty much it for the install of this new radiator. So that pretty much does it for this install of this new radiator here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Again, I apologize for not posting for so long, two months, more than two months actually. So we're back in it. We're getting this thing ready for the next track day. I did sign up for a NASA event, my first NASA event ever. I want to go through the rankings so that I can eventually get my competition license. NASA at NCM October 22nd and 23rd, I believe, will be an HPDE-1 driving, going through the, the drills, and the instruction, learning everything that we can so that we can get into the world of wheel to wheel. Not only that, I did pick up a new truck, or a new to me truck at least, and I'm excited to show you guys what it is. That'll be in the next video, hopefully. Obviously, you guys know I was using my dad's Tacoma to trailer this thing around everywhere, but he lives pretty far away now, so it's about time I got myself a tow rig. I'm in love with it. It's my first truck ever and most likely will be my DD. So not the best for fuel economy, but it's hard to have two vehicles here in Chicago. And as always, if you guys like the content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to, go ahead and share the video. That'll really help. And if you guys want to stay up to date with this thing right here and my progress as a driver, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I have a bunch of things, new things lined up for the future, and I'm excited to show you guys. So until then, stay safe, stay smooth. We'll see you in the next video.